I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so I'm sure many of you probably know that Windows 11 has absolutely ridiculous hardware requirements and these requirements aren't necessarily there for the OS to run perfectly fine. Now in a, in, in a way, yeah, that actually those specs are there for a reason for performance, but another reason are there is for security and blah blah blah. And I'll be honest with you. Um, Upon looking at stuff online about Windows 11, people have been running the OS on stuff that was manufactured way before these uh, you know, these requirements here. For example, the requirements for Windows 11 CPU-wise are AMD's Ryzen 2000 series are newer, or Intel's HGen Core series CPUs are newer. So those are two of the big cutoffs. They also want you to use TPM 2.0. So Windows 11 being released around a time to where there are shortages in chips and stuff like that, it's just <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of like Windows Vista on steroids, you know. Um, it's pretty much encouraging you to, to, to either stick with Windows 10 on your com existing computer or throw away your old computer and go buy a new one to get Windows 11. We're going to disregard that. We're going to actually install Windows 11 on this computer here. So this computer is, as you can see, AMD A6-6420K APU with Radeon HD graphics. It's an older APU. It is a non-TPM system, I do believe, because uh, as you can see, the uh, TPM is not enabled, and this is not even... The system doesn't even have t the older TPM either, because uh, apparently I believe the CPU doesn't include it. You can see that um, we have four gigs of memory. We have Secure Boot turned on. The uh, system drive is at least 64 gigabytes. We got a 250 gig SSD in there, and also got a 500 gig hard drive, which doesn't have a partition on it yet. It's a uh, CPU that has two logical cores. I got it overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. It's normally a 4 gig CPU. So, we're going to actually be taking this flash drive here, which currently has Windows 10 installation files on it, and we're going to uh, set up a Windows 11 bootable USB that will install Windows 11 um, in disregarding the TPM requirement and the CPU requirement as well. Okay, so now we're in Rufus 3.18 beta. I've already selected the uh, USB drive and I've selected our ISO, Windows 11 64-bit. And you can see it right now it's a standard Windows 11 installation, TPM 2.0 plus secure boot. And you can, uh, let's see, uh, it tells you right there. Pause to view that. So we're going to select no TPM, no secure boot. And let's see, okay. Pause to read that. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and start. You can see everything is selected. We're GPT, UEFI. And we're going to let this do its thing. And of course, it's going to warn you that any data on the device will be erased. That's fine. I've went ahead and backed up the uh, files that were on it. So it's going to copy everything over. Okay, so the flash drive has been finished. Now we're ready to get started on the computer. Okay, so we're back in here with this machine. And I've went ahead and inserted the uh, USB drive. And just for giggles, we're going to leave this up right here. So we're going to go into, uh, there we are, let's run setup. So this will see if the uh, Rufus does exactly what it says. 
see if it bypasses the checks for the uh, CPU, the uh, TPM, all that good stuff. Now, if it doesn't, then we can clean install it. So at first glance, the installer looks very similar. I'm going to change this to not right now. It looks very similar to Windows 10 setup at first. Accept our license terms. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, uh, nothing. Keep nothing. One thing I can definitely say is it seemed like it didn't take nearly as long to get through that part of the setup. So on a Windows 10 step, you're normally it's like you're sitting there waiting for it to get to the uh, the step where you can change this setting or or proceed on with the defaults. All right, so we're ready to install. It says let's go ahead and click install and let it install Windows 11. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and run through setup here, and just FYI, I have disconnected the Ethernet cable in the back of the system to uh, disconnect it from the Internet. Now, this is Windows 11 Pro, um, and the thing is, with Windows 11 Home, normally, technically, you cannot finish setup without an Internet connection, and that's just ridiculous in my opinion. Um, and I'm going to cover this in a later video. I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 11 on probably this computer here and you know, Windows 11 Home on this computer here and um, there is a trick you can do in the uh, out of the box experience to force Windows 11 Home to allow you to set up a local account and and not have to connect to the internet because I mean in, there, in certain scenarios you simply may not have internet access and you should be able to set up and use the computer for off network related stuff I mean Microsoft is getting they're, they're getting ridiculous of how hard they're trying to push this whole cloud based stuff but anyways um, again Windows 11 Pro we have right now so I'm going to set up with a local account and you can see it's probably trying to get to the uh, okay it's, so, it's, it's similar to Windows 10 we're asked for the keyboard input and all that stuff. I don't have internet. See, that option is not available in Windows 11 Home setup. But there's a trick, and I'll cover that in a later video. I'm going to turn off all of this stuff. <laughs> now let's see here. See if this trick also works. Bypass the high, we're happy you're here. Garbage. <laughs> I'm curious if OneDrive also wants to install itself right after you log in for the first time, like it does on this 10. Right, let's see here. I'm going to attempt to get to the taskbar. So of course there's a lot of stuff going on in the background right now. Mind you, we are running this on a quote unquote unsupported system. Ah. Task manager, thank you. Oh, 
One drive set up. There it is. End it. And then we go to uh, start up and disable it there. So yeah, there, there's definitely some things in Windows 11 that are very similar to Windows 10. So let's go ahead and connect this to the internet so that way we can get our drivers. So let, yeah, let's see if uh, this unsupported computer can get drivers for like your graphics and things like that. Let's see here. You do have the right click options. Let's get device managered up. I'm assuming once you get proper uh, graphics drivers, um, you'll get the 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 uh, enhanced graphic experience that you um, normally have in Windows 11. So overall, very similar. The Windows 10. You get your start menu in the center. So, all right, let's see here. You know, I I, I must say I'm I'm going to sit down and actually play around with the OS uh, before I really can draw my conclusions on it. That uh. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because the Mid Tower Lux it's going it's going to be in need of a Windows reinstall here pretty soon. Um, just got some got some minor things going on with it that um, I decided I think it's going to be worth a uh, wipe and reinstall. Here's something I use a lot: <laughs> Paint. Now, like I say, um, the the uh, the drivers could have something to do here with with all this. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. You right click on the taskbar, you just get uh, taskbar settings. And of course, uh, there's our task manager. And you can see our CPU usage is wide open, which is pretty typical for this APU. But, uh, let's look at. Um, some stuff here so you, you can see the CPU is pretty wide open this thing's doing a bunch of stuff at once memory usage isn't too bad you can see it's installing drivers so it's installed and look at this guys so our, our our graphics now I can't remember what that message said but uh the graphics seems to be working just fine here we've got the new uh, rounded windows and uh got the uh, smooth Example, you can see right there. So yeah, guys. Um, back last summer, when I said uh, Windows 11 could be the new Vista, I wasn't kidding. I mean, you got this sleek-looking operating system that has these these ridiculously high hardware requirements. But yet, you can see this. Uh, this old system, which is not even a Ryzen system, this is this is way back. <laughs> not even not even AMD Ryzen. This is a, a little dual core AMD APU. Let's see here. It is activated, so it um it was based off the Windows 10 license this machine had. I'm gonna say I I'm liking I'm liking how this is this is uh, laid out. Um, it doesn't seem nearly as clunky as Windows 10 in a way. Um, it's more I'd say it's more user intuitive than uh than the uh, settings app in Windows 10. Now if we go to Windows Update, it'll probably tell me. That system requirements are not met, but here, here's the crazy thing, guys. You, you got these drivers and stuff that are pending download. We're talking about items that are for hardware that's technically not compatible with Windows 11. So, Microsoft's thing about this is they're saying 
that you're pretty much on your own. We're not going to support you. We're not going to give you security updates. I mean, this is kind of what they've said, but to be honest, they also said that Windows 10 was only going to be free for a year for Windows 7 and Windows 8 users. And to this day, you can still you can still actually get Windows 10 for free if you have a Windows 7 license. That has not changed and probably will never change. And theoretically, you could probably get Windows 11 for free. And that's something I may try in a later video. Um, I may actually pull up Windows 11 setup and try to enter a Windows 7 product key and see what happens. That'd be something interesting to do. Uh, so yeah, we're we're getting we're getting driver updates and uh, and stuff for uh, a system that was technically not even Windows 11 compatible. So um, let's pull up File Explorer. Like I say, guys, um, this is my, this is my first time ever running and playing with Windows 11. So it's going to take. I'm going to this. Like I say, I'm going to sit down with it and spend some time with it. Is and really that way I can really give y'all my thoughts on it. Here's something I want to try out. Let's access the classic control panel. And you can see we still got a pretty good bit of stuff here in the classic control panel. Oh, look here. So they uh they fixed the loophole in Windows 11. In Windows 10, if you did what I just did, you would still, even in 21H2, you would still be able to access the classic system properties window. So, you can see that we have, uh, again, there's our AMD A6 APU, 8 gigs of RAM, Windows 11 Pro 21H2, Now my thing is, uh, I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a message yet about the system um, requirements not met. That's definitely somewhere in the OS. I'll definitely see it eventually. But um, yeah, guys, this is this is interesting. So this definitely comes to show why exactly why the one is eleven. Hardware requirements are absolute. It, it, it's 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 like a myth. It's it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I must say, um, a lot of computers out there it seems like can run this new OS just fine. This this machine seems to be running it pretty well. Now, of course, ain't the fastest computer out there. But uh, neither neither was it super fast on Windows 10 either. You paint. Like I say, guys, I'm going to sit around and play around with this for a little bit. So yeah, guys, Windows 11 running on an AMD A6 APU. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the computer channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.